The first thing I really want to do, a lot of people don't know who everybody is. So I think it's a good idea to introduce everybody. Now most people know everybody here, but a lot of people don't. So I decided I'll, if I can remember everybody's name, that'll be my challenge for my memory. I was worried about having the surgery to forget everything, but everything worked out. I still can play bridge. Okay. This is Keith. This is Linda's husband. Okay. How long have you been married? A year and a half? Yeah. How long, Linda? Uh, last December, so a year and a half. A year and a half. Okay. Okay. This is... I'm going to introduce Dina. Dina. Dina over here is Linda's daughter. And to her right is her husband, Dan. Now, we're going to talk more about Dina later when I explain what happened when I had my surgery. The next to Dina is who? Nobody. Well, it's a blank. It's okay. Next to Dina is Jessica. That's my that's my my other granddaughter, and that is uh, Paula's daughter, which I don't know where Paula is. She's around or something. Holding the baby there is Michael. That is Sarah's husband. They just got married this year. Last year, and it's that the, she's holding my youngest great great grandson, which is which is uh, Jessica's son. She just had her in, in, at Christmas, the day before Christmas, the 23rd. Over here, you can see is Elizabeth, which is Tony's the wife and child. Tony here next to his mother. That's Tony's. Tony's mother, just to see if I see, remember everybody, and then his son, okay? And that's his wife. They've been married a long time. They've been married about 11 years. They've been married since they were a kid. They met in college at San Luis Obispo, and they got married just after they graduated, so they've been married quite a long time. And that's their son, obviously. His name is, his name is, uh... <laughs> Jack! Sean! Jack. <laughs> okay. Going down that way, Carly. Carly, we've known for quite a while, at least 10 years. He lives in Santa Barbara. And he's very smart. So if you have any questions, just ask him. He knows the answers there. Sitting next to him, raise your hand, is, is, uh, is, is Jessica's husband, John. They've been married, I think, about three, how many years? Six years? Six years. It's hard to believe. Right, so we go to the table over here. Tim, that, is, that was uh, Paula's first husband, and the mother of their children, and the father of their children, which is Sarah. Sarah's sitting there, and she's holding her, her niece, Charlotte, which is my first great-grandchild. And sitting behind her is Paula. That's my youngest daughter. And sex to her, you know, sitting next to her, that's Sheila. That's your first wife. That's my first <laughs> daughter, wife. Okay. And the table behind them is Jack. Jack, is his last name is uh, Seamus. Who? What is it? Sumo Kimo. Or something like that. Forget the last name. He's my Italian friend. He's one of my golfing buddies. We've been playing golf for at least six or seven years. And sitting next to him is his girlfriend of about a thousand years, D. And sitting next to him is Bob Peterson, which is a person. I, I met Bob when we worked. We, we both worked at IBM in the 60s. And we met and we knew each other then. And then later on, after I left IBM and he, he eventually retired from IBM, and we met him again at a golf course. I think I met him with Larry. Now sitting next to him is Larry, that's my brother-in-law, that's Sheila's brother. And sitting next to him, her, him, is this girlfriend of about seven years, Dina, uh, not Dina, Erica. Not Erica, Eva. God, see. see. My mind is going little by little. Dina. And sitting way back of him is Wayne Christensen's. That is, that is, uh, 
that is the father of Ke you know unfortunately Kevin died about a year and a half ago and suddenly Kevin's father was Wayne and we're still friends we'll still be friends with us in our life even though Kevin passed away a year and a half ago unfortunately and sitting next to him is his son and his two children are you there and his wife is next to him then his son and his two children his son is Brad and his daughter-in-law is Elizabeth too we have a few Elizabeths here okay have we missed everybody on that table okay then on the other side you can see he's doing, he's doing very well he's doing extremely well ah. Michael is, is Sheila's nephew, mm -hmm. and, her, and next to her is his wife. Denise. Uh, Denise. I'm sharp, but I can't remember her name. What's your name? Denise. 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 Well, that's a hard name to remember. That's a hard name to remember. Jerry, they've been married for 20 year, one years. 21 years. 21 years. <laughs> Okay, sitting next to them is is uh, is, uh, is uh, Michael's sister Betty. We won't talk about how many times she's been very unusual, but, she, but anyway, she's with her new friend. Are you are you are you, are you engaged? I can't remember. Yes. What's his name? Mike. Mike. Yes. Okay. Yes. And his, her daughter is where's your daughter? Oh, that's her daughter and her da and her granddaughter. Yeah. Betty's Betty's a yeah, grandmother. She's only about thirty years old. But she's a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> that's everybody at that table. Now we go to this table. And the first row is so, so my oldest friend, a friendly bald guy like me. We met in college over sixty years ago at UCLA. And we've been friends ever since. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing story because we went to, when we were young, we went to all the football games. And uh, the story about me, which is very important, after a UCLA SC game, he, he wanted me to go to a party. And I had a, had a sister who had this big bandage on my head. I didn't want to go, but he said, let's go. And while we're at the party, Lee introduces me to this girl, which was a very tall girl in those days, that happened to be Sheila. So Sheila knew Lee before I did. And he's the one that introduced me to Sheila at this party. Who knows, I might never have met her. But that's the story. So she knew, he knew my wife before I did. Sitting next to him is his friend, Ruth. Unfortunately, her, her, uh, you, may, you might remember Sheila's, I mean, Lee's wife of about 40, 50 years. I was, he was at my wedding. He's the only one here who was at my wedding. I think, Larry, uh, was you at my wedding, Larry? Yeah. Yeah, you were probably at my wedding. <laughs> and, and Lee was at my wedding, and I was at her his first wedding. Uh, I remember the, when they got married because Sheila had just had a baby. And she, after she had her first daughter, she was not very well. She couldn't get out of bed. She had a headache. And she got out of bed to go to the wedding. So I know we were married on the 3rd, and so he had to be married on the 17th, because it was two weeks later. Is that right? What day? Close? Okay. Anyway, so the next thing next to her is his friend Ruth. And next to her is my friend Lee Blanche, Blanche Silverberg. Now her husband, was my second oldest friend. We met around 1962. And the only thing I had against, against Ark was he was a Giant fan. And I was a Dodger fan, so we had many arguments. But we both were UCLA fans. And after every UCLA game, we would talk about the game and scream about what was wrong with the team and things of this sort. Unfortunately, we lost Art a few years ago. And that's why, but we still have land. She lives with us in Leisure Village. After we moved there, all my friends started moving in one by one. And he was the first, and then Blanche was the second. And then, well, I guess you moved in the fourth. And next, sitting next to him are our friends, Michael and, and Sally. We've known them for about over 20 years. They were a member of our first gourmet group. 
We used to get together every other month and have food. Well, when we got older, food wasn't as easy to make, and one by one, our friends started to pass away, unfortunately. And, and that, they too have lasted, so that's, our, that's them. And then sitting in front of them is Paula Katz. She was a member of our original, our original bridge group, I mean, bridge group, <laughs> the Gourmet group. I'm glad she's here. Her, 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 she lost her husband a few years ago. He was a very nice person, too. Unfortunately, this is what's happening as we get older. Our friends are dying. That's tough. We hate to do that. Sitting next to them are Oberman, Oberman, the Oberman's friend and Phil. Now, we've known them for a long time, too. I think we met when, after we first got married at a, at a synagogue, didn't we? Or a synagogue group. Over in the in West, Westwood somewhere we met. And we've been friends ever since. So we've been friends quite a long while, at least close to 60 years. They've been they're married almost 60 years also. When is your, were you married, you're married 60 years soon. Yeah. Because it turns out she is the same age as Sheila and, and, and Phil, Phil is the same age as me. And we were both married in February. So that's unusual. We both been married 60 years and both married in February. Which is an unusual yeah. situation. Did I miss anybody? Oh, I'm sitting over there, Brian. When I first met him, I thought he was one of the waiters. <laughs> I haven't seen him in such a long time. That's Larry's son, his younger son. No, Larry's son. Oh, his grandson. Yeah. His son is too young. <laughs> Larry has two children. Bob, who lives in the Sacramento area, he could come down here. And his daughter is... Uh, is a Dean Jeannie, and this is Jeannie's son. I'm sorry. I don't meet these people very often. They're strangers to me sometimes. But I know, I'm glad Brian was able to come. Have I hit everybody? I only missed a couple of names. That's pretty good. It's a challenge for me. Okay. a little about me before I'm just going to make a speech. I wanted to talk a little about me. A lot of people in here didn't know I was sick. We kept it, we didn't keep it secret, but we didn't want to advertise it. And the reason was because I wasn't sure a number of things were going to happen. I could die, but uh, I was a little concerned about it. I and I want to talk a little bit about my children and grandchildren who were very important when I found out I got I was sick. I had a number of tests before they could figure out what was wrong with me. Even though I figured it out on the internet, I knew it was wrong. And so when I went for my last exam, which was a colonoscopy, I just had had one three years ago, and you're not supposed to have any after you're 80 years old. But I had one, and I found a tumor. And so, so my daughter, Linda, was with me when the doctor told me I had cancer. So she said, well, we have to have a PET scan. What was it a PET scan? And so, we, we, we called up to go to the next day to a pet scan and, and the people didn't show up. So here I am, I hadn't eaten in 24 hours, I had this scan. She called about four or five places and finally found some place in Oxnard that we did them a pet scan. And that was the scan where after you leave the scan, you're not supposed to talk any pregnant women because they put something in you which is radioactive. But it's an interesting exam because it finds cancer in your body and it turned out that I couldn't see any other cancer or what I had. So they figured, well, maybe I should have this surgery. And then Dina got involved, my doctor Dina. Dina Dina. What is your name? Dina Gaspero. <laughs> Dr. Dina, I call her. She's a pediat she's a she's a pediatrist. <laughs> so she got involved almost immediately to try to figure out if I could survive the surgery, I was 86 years old, and I was worried about it. She recommended a couple of doctors. One was, one was where she worked, but we felt that it was too hard to drive, drive to go down there. And then she found another doctor in Oxnard, and finally Linda found a doctor in uh, Santa Barbara. Now, when you're on Medicare, you know, you can go anywhere you want. You don't have to go to any hospital, or you don't have to go to the hospital next store to you. We go to a hospital anywhere in the United States. So I knew that this hospital in Santa Barbara was very good. 
It wasn't in a hospital. The thousand oaks wasn't bad. But I, did, I, I knew the doctor who works there, and I didn't particularly like this doctor. He was not very nice to my wife, and she went to him. And he, we didn't like the pers his personality. So you, are you the one that recommended the doctor in Oxnard? She recommended the doctor in Oxnard. So we went to see him, and unfortunately, he was very, wasn't too optimistic about my surgery. I got a little nervous. So should I go to him, or should I finally, my, doc, my daughter looked up something on the internet, and she found a doctor in Santa Barbara. Now the doctor in Santa Barbara had a fellowship in the type of surgery that I had to have. She, it's called laparoscopic. It's only been developed about 10 years. In the olden days, the issues you open you up completely and take anything out. But they do it laparoscopically, so I found that she had had plenty of experience there. She had done 30 surgeries this year, and so we figured, and she was young. She graduated from college in about 10 years ago, so she couldn't have been more than about 35 or 36 years. How old do you think she was? Do you think she was 40? 40? She was very young, so I figured she'd have all the experience that maybe an older doctor would know, so I went with her, and she was very laid back. Now, the only problem is, we had to go to Santa Barbara. That meant that somebody had to drive me there. So who's going to drive me to Santa Barbara? Well, it's going to be my daughter, Linda. And, she's, and she took me and my wife to Santa Barbara, along with Dina, and they were there when I went, when I had my surgery and when I woke up. Now, Dina didn't have to do this, but she stayed the first night with me on the couch in my room. Now, I don't remember too much about the first day, the first night. I mean, I was under a lot of sedatives, so I don't remember a lot of what happened. The only thing I do remember, and it's funny because I remembered it, they took the catheter out of me before I got out of surgery, and I told the doctor to do that. But unfortunately, they said, we're gonna to have to put it back unless you go to the bathroom. Now, I remember that, because I woke up and I went, and I said, okay, no catheter, and I'm okay. And then I went to sleep, that's all I remember about the first night. So she stayed with me the first night. Then they went, and Paul, Paul, uh, Jess, I mean, it's Paul, my wife's name, Sheila, she stayed in the hotel all by herself. No, she stayed with you. The second night, Linda stayed with me all night long. Don't fall asleep, Jane. I don't know what I've done without her. Anyway, I want, what's important is that the next day, Linda had to leave and Paula had to come all the way from the valley to drive all by herself from the valley to, to Santa Barbara because she had to be with her mother to take care of her mother because her mother didn't try, wasn't trying to get around that area. Anyway, so they stayed the rest of the time. And they slept at Harley's house for about three days during that period. I, see, I was supposed to have the surgery be out in two days. The doctor told me it'd be two days. Well, I said, I think I'll be at least three. Well, it turns out I was in the hospital seven days. And uh, there was a couple things that happened. We won't talk about it. That's why it was delayed. So when I was finally released after seven days, where was I going to go? There was no way my wife could take care of me because I could barely get out of bed. And so the people at the hospital figure out what's going on, and they say, well, you, can, you have to go to the nursing home. You can't go home. And they're the ones that called up a bunch of nursing homes, including where I live, and they got me into the place where I live, which was more convenient because she lived and just walked to see me. And that's the secret we went there. Uh, did I forget anything? The surgery was very successful. I don't have cancer anymore, supposedly. And I'll live a number of years. It's taken me a lot longer to get over this than I thought. I thought I'd be out of the hospital in a week, one week of recovery, and I was stopping and I started playing bridge. This hasn't happened. It's just it's a lot longer to recover than I thought. I still haven't driven yet. That's my next document. I think the good drive. And hopefully in a month or two we'll be back to playing golf with my buddies Jack and Larry and Bob. Did I forget anything? But the important thing that I wanted to be uh, all you know is my grandchildren 
We're, we're calling me constantly. Tony called me a number of times. Obviously, Jess can come and see me because she had her baby to take care of. And seven, seven. <coughs> and Sarah was with me most of the time, on and off. Somebody asked me about the party. What happened? Why did I have the party here? It turns out that last summer, we actually decided to have this party, and we were going to have it at our place. Now, the problem is we had to work out a date, because Dina works every weekend or every other weekend, and we had to work on figuring a date that Dina could come. And so we worked out the day, we wanted to have it on our, our anniversary of server the 12th, but that's impossible, it's a Thursday. The closest day was the 14th, and unfortunately that St. Valentine's Day never had been had a big party at our place, so we couldn't have it then. So we decided, okay, this is way back in August or September, we set it up to have it on the 14th of February, and we were going to have it at Leisure Village, not Leisure Village, University Village. Well, about that, we didn't know well, I had, you know, I had to have my surgery. And I forget at what time they told my wife, incidentally, we made a mistake. The 28th isn't available. You have to make another date. And this happened sometime in January. And I said, well, this is ridiculous. I can't, we can't. We, I called up Dean and Linda. And we, the, the earliest day we could have it was in June. That's the way it worked out. So I said, well, let's, let's try having it somewhere else. So it was Linda who found this place. I think it's a very good place. It's actually probably better than we have a, at our place, because in our place, we would have to be on a fixed menu. They, wouldn't, they, 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 they don't do a buffet. If they do a buffet, they give you two choices of food. Not a very good. So I think, is everybody happy? Is anybody happy? Yeah. Yeah. All, all for Linda, she's the one that that figured out where to have it. And Sarah was the one that organized, got everybody to send an email. And so it's been a great, yeah, because there's only three people I know who aren't here. Unfortunately, Sheila's sister couldn't make it because she had a bad cold. And uh, who else is missing? Oh, Blanche's daughter, but, uh, not Blanche's daughter, Lee's daughter was supposed to come. She couldn't make it either, I guess. And, well, I think that's pretty good. I think it's per pretty good because a lot of people came from a long distance. That they came from uh, San Francisco, Sacramento, no, not Sacramento. Where do you live, Betty? 